Hello and welcome to Paranormal Ireland. Recently my wife and I had the opportunity to attend the Highland Games in Ligonier, PA and it was a great time. My wife has a lot of Scottish blood in her and I knew I had Irish blood but come to find out, since I'm strongly related to the Campbells, I have Scottish as well. Anyway, being as how Highland Games celebrate both of our histories, it led me to be curious about paranormal events in Ireland. Before I start, please stay to the end of this video as I have a special announcement about a new series. Cunine Poltergeist In the 1900s, a widow named Bridget Murphy and her seven children had an unexpected guest that wasn't welcome. According to the story, this poltergeist would cause loud footstep sounds from the loft, as well as rapping sounds on the walls, sometimes making a song. The spirit would also throw plates across the room, as well as lift the children's bed in the air while they slept in them. A priest came in on two separate occurrences, in an attempt to do an exorcism, but both times failed. The family decided to move to America, and sadly found out that the specter followed them as well. According to reports, the spirit left them, and many believe it went back to the house in Conneen. The house still stands to this day in the townland of Cornerosland, and recently the trees surrounding it have been cleared out in an attempt to make it a tourist attraction. Becoming aware of the plan, a local priest has warned against making it an attraction, as he believes it will just anger the spirit. An author named Tarquin Blake was working on his book searching for true Irish ghost stories while exposing the fake ones. Recently, he stated that it takes a lot to spook him, but he had multiple occurrences while trying to take pictures of the location. First, he grabbed his cell phone to call his wife, and the freshly charged battery was dead. Then he went to film, and the battery was dead as well. Finally, when he went to change batteries at his car, he couldn't shake the eerie feeling that the location gave off. Loftus Hall This is one of the most haunted locations in Ireland. Originally, the castle was built on the Hook Peninsula in 1351 by the Redmond family, but sadly they lost ownership during Cromwell's War. After this event, the Loftus family took ownership until it was destroyed and finally rebuilt in 1870 by the Marquis of Ely. The original story goes back to a man named Tottenham, his wife, and two daughters named Anne and Elizabeth. As the story goes, being the castle was located near the sea, they frequently had occupants from ships taking shelter at the castle during storms. One particular event saw a strange young man show up. With this visit, the rain kept up for weeks and strange purple clouds rolled in. The man became taken with Anne and spent many hours talking together in the tapestry room. Other times the family would set at tables playing cards. During one card game, a card fell to the floor, and when Anna went to pick it up, she discovered their visitor had hooves for feet. Anna jumped up and proclaimed her discovery, to which everyone said the young man was the devil, and supposedly the man sprung up and rose straight up through the house, making a giant hole in the roof. It is said that not long after, Anna grew ill and died of starvation when she was locked in the tapestry room. Other stories say that Anna locked herself in the room and starved for missing her lover. Another story states that the stranger and Anna had sex, and when the demon baby was born, the family killed and buried it. No matter how the story happened, what is agreed upon is that Anna's ghost made its appearance quite often, to which the servants left due to the presence. Various priests were brought in to exorcise the castle. It should be mentioned that on August of 2014, a 21-year-old Lewisham man was visiting the castle when he caught the images of what he thinks to be Anna and an old lady. Originally, he thought he caught guests' reflections, but noted that the specters were facing the wrong way. Outside of any of the religious connotations of the story, Loftus Hall is known as a famed location for ghost hunters. Corny Throughout the world, there are quite a few households that have a presence from someone no longer living. In many of these cases, it comes down to strange sounds or misinterpreted events. There are others that are more obvious when residents hear the being, feel the being touching them, or even downright seeing the being manifest. With this event, the presence was one of the most forthcoming as any that I have ever heard. Before I start, this story takes place during the 19th and 20th century, and doesn't commit to an exact location or family name. 
Normally I will write it off due to that, but it appears that this was done since the family and relatives want to stay anonymous to avoid ridicule, so they get a pass by me. This house is located in Dublin, and according to reports, the specter made its first appearance by making a banging noise on the floor. After this, almost in a fashion as to say, I'm here, recognize me, the spirit started to talk to the family and servants directly. By all accounts, when he spoke, his voice was booming and undeniable, and seemed to come from the coal cellar near the kitchen. For some reason, the family named it Corny, which the ghost accepted, but it was quick to mention wasn't his real name. Maybe he got his name for the fact he enjoyed playing practical jokes on the living. The servants feared Corny, but it seemed he got along with and respected the lady of the house. For the servants, he quite enjoyed tormenting them. They slept above the coal cellar, and since they thought that is where Corny resided, they asked to move to the upper floors. Once they moved, they laid down to sleep, only to have the doors mysteriously open wide and Corny to say, Ha ha, you devils. I am here before you. I am not confined to any particular part of this house. There was even a report of the cook making a fish dinner, only to have the main dish come up missing. The cook started to cry for fear of being thought to have stolen the fish. Suddenly a fish flew out of the coal cellar with Corny saying, There, you blubbering fool, is your fish for you. Corny wouldn't talk to anyone who didn't fear him or was of a religious nature. The family's uncle stopped by and the ghost refused to talk to him even after the uncle took a fireplace poker and hit the basement door stating, I will make you talk to me. The next morning, the family found a poker broken half. At one point, the specter informed the lady of the house that in life he was a bad person who died in a bad way, with very other little details given. As strange as it may sound, Corny did have other ghostly guests over to the house at times and would tell the family of this. Those nights, the residents would hear disembodied voices and the next day would find odd soot footprints on the floors. After his activity became too much or too malicious, the family decided to move, but every time a prospective buyer came to view the house, he would speak to them and scare them off. Finally, after the lady of the house spoke to him about wanting to leave, he promised to be good, but told her if the house was ever destroyed, he would haunt its very foundations. The house was sold to a widow shortly after, but Corny must have been too much for her, as all accounts stated is now vacant. The Fog being unable to see what is in front of you is always unnerving and has led to many phobias as well as interesting ghost stories. This idea has presented itself in a movie entitled The Fog, with the original being made in 1980 and a remake in 2005. There are others I am sure, but another good one is the 2007 film The Mist. With these adaptations, they both represent an alien or creature coming in with the fog and wrecking havoc on an unsuspecting town. I know you may be thinking, but Ben, this isn't a movie cryptid video. You would be right, and you may be shocked to know an event similar to the movies is said to have happened for real. On October 9th, 1976, a small town experienced a strange thick fog that rolled in at about 7 p.m. and didn't leave until morning. The people were terrified as to think something supernatural caused it, or even worse, what it could possibly mean. During the event, most everyone locked their doors and stayed inside. The police received over 60 calls from people reporting that they saw the shambling forms of reanimated corpses moving through the fog. In some cases, reports came in that people who ventured out into the anomaly would meet other people, only to turn immediately and find them gone. The police wrote these reports off as pranks until they discovered something frightening after the fog left. All of the graves at the local cemetery were open, and to this day it remains a mystery. On a personal note, I am unsure what to think of this story. As I frequently say, when generalistic terms such as a small town with no distinction is used, I question if it is valid or just a good scary story. I will mention that when researching this topic, I found plenty of sites talking about it, but oddly enough, 98% of them were broken links or the content was moved. This is odd to me, since the conspiracy theorist side of me says cover-up, while the skeptical side questions why they would be removed since many false stories stay untouched on the internet. So what do you think? As stated at the beginning, I have a new series planned that I wanted to share with you all. 
Being as how we are officially in October, I thought it would be fitting to create a series of scary stories just for this month. These won't be the overdone creepypastas. There will be interesting older stories or ones you may have never heard of. I'll post them through the week so it doesn't conflict with my Sunday videos. I do want to mention that last night I had something strange happen and we'll be posting that soon. It isn't fake or put on, but I mention it since I don't want to confuse you with thinking it is part of the Scary Story series. With that, be safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later!